Hello. Welcome to any combo lords joining me today for a little live video where I thought a fun activity for us to do today would be since we're near the end of grade negative one in the combo class school system and we're close to grade negative two, I might as well start checking together my funds and my time to visit cheaper used places to restock what classroom supplies got destroyed by the rain or to look forward to what classroom supplies would help us improve the combo class experience if we got some new supplies that we didn't have for grade negative one. There's always uh, a good amount of use you can get from a fun classroom item. And to me, dice are very practical. Clocks are, I guess we can call them practical for their mathematical demonstrations, all these stuffed clocks. But there's plenty of other classroom supplies that can exist. So today, what we're gonna do is look at some items on this silly tier list here where you can rank things for fun and I'm going to be ranking them on how cool I think the classroom item is and then for the one we'll also be checking out if I have one of the items or if I did have one if it's destroyed uh, most of the things I'll have some version of each of these items probably but we'll see what status they're in or if we need to get a new one and then we will slowly build a little list here of things I may want to put on a list of supplies to get before grade negative two. So anyone joining me today can help contribute to this thought process. Let me know if any of these you think I'm underrating or overrating when I rank them. <clears throat> As you may know on tier lists like this, S is given a higher tier than the typical A. S is this super special supreme higher level. So S tier is going to be items that we think are super good. Now, there was a few tier lists for classroom supplies I found. And the other one that I actually put in the thumbnail here looked more animated and it had a clock in it. And I liked that at first, but then I noticed that the way they were sorting these here on the side was, uh, I use it a lot. I don't use it a lot. I kind of use it a lot or stuff like that. Or I guess I ended up putting this one in the thumbnail for that reason, because the cartoonish looking one, which maybe we'll do another day that did have a clock had kind of weird grades. They were based on how often you used it, not how dope it could possibly be. Uh, we're ranking it on potential awesomeness, the amount of learning you could get from one of these devices. And S tier is gonna be reserved for like supreme high learning things, A is a good A, and so on from there, who know this sort of grading system. When I went to school, it worked similar to this. Without the S, but where you got your A's, B's, C's, D's, and they skip the E's for some reason, and you got the F's. So, as we go through this list, leave your thoughts on if there are any I should be putting higher, because anything that gets S tier or A tier, and maybe some of the B tiers, if I don't have a good version of them in the classroom, if whatever I had to do that purpose is now destroyed or non-existent, then we will put them on this side list. There's also a format I might employ for more of the streams where I might have a little writing pad here. Whiteboards, of course, are my go-to usually on streams. Those are awesome to write on, but it's actually, you know, twice the practicality if we have a whiteboard in the background where I could write or draw some things and a little text pad here where I'll be able to have a saved list for the future where I won't need to redocument whatever we did in the stream or come back to it. You just save this little document. We also may even do writing streams on here someday. I have been meaning to get more consistent with writing some books I've been working on. And while my fiction books may have to be a secret process that I work on myself and reveal to you later, uh, some of the math-oriented books that I want to write, you guys could maybe watch me research and brainstorm and learn a bit from that. Uh, so we may have some writing streams in the future too. I like my little text edit pad right here. Don't need anything fancy. You know, when I had a Microsoft Word, 
it would always be like, I think you want your paragraph to have an indent now. I think that means you want everything to be in italics. It's like, come on, man, don't stop doing shortcuts for me, computer. I just want words. Give me words. Give me the ability to choose when I want to indent the paragraph. I can handle that. So I like my good old simple text edit, kind of like I like a paper notebook or a whiteboard. Uh, it's funny that I'm in such a whiteboard era because throughout much of my life, I was known as a guy who had a paper notebook. I would always be taking notes of some sort in a paper notebook, fiction stories, math ideas, random thoughts, um, memoir, diary entries, all sorts of stuff. And so it's only uh, about a little over a year ago that I got super into whiteboards. Um, ironically, I have a funny bit of footage of me interacting with a whiteboard and writing Demotro on a whiteboard. That this, okay, this is gonna be a whole episode someday, because this is one of the funnier stories that I have footage of. But I'll give a brief peek of a funny story is that me and one of my friends had access to this place at, so I live in the Bay Area of California and a big mathy and just like cultural hub here is UC Berkeley, the uh, college uh, at Berkeley. And they have a lot of random resources like this giant uh, concert hall called Zellerbach Hall. And we're not, I almost want to Google it and show you pictures and dig up stuff um, from my hard drive, but we'll save that for another day. That's a story of its own because I have plenty of footage of it. But me and my friend on Christmas one year, because we were both Jewish, um, Zellerbach Hall was closed and no one was doing anything there on Christmas and we had access to it and we uh, went in, uh, possibly unauthorized, and I have some funny footage of me alone on the stage of Zellerbach Hall and alone in the audience as I'm doing things in that massive concert hall with just me and my friend. And then uh, there was this room connected to it. It was connected to all these like studio like places and one of them had whiteboards and I was getting ready for launching combo class then even though a lot of incidents happened in my past this was actually a few years ago so things got in the way of me launching combo class then but i had the name demotro in the back of my head and i had whiteboards in the back of my head and I had, there's this room with all these whiteboards we got to and i wrote the demotro show because i wasn't sure what i was going to call combo class on this big whiteboard and then we realized that I hadn't written it in a dry erase marker. It was something more like a permanent marker that I had written it in on the board or like a wet erase marker instead of a dry erase or something along those lines. And the eraser is not erasing it. And we're like, oh my God, we just left this imprint that says the Demotro show. We can't just leave this in Zellerbach Hall. Um, so we ended up getting it off. We were able to scrub off the Demotro show. Uh, I'll have to think about how legally I'm allowed to share all the details about that. We didn't cause any trouble. We didn't break anything. We didn't leave any damage. You know, we we're very respectful, but that still has to be a story for another day. But that's probably the first funny whiteboard footage I had because I was always known as more of a notebook guy. And I also got hooked on my digital notebooks. I've learned uh, to get comfortable with typing my thoughts out. So I find it good to, as you think through the day, type out a bunch of stuff and then sometimes use a paper notebook instead. And if you're me, sometimes use a whiteboard instead too. So that's our chaotic little introduction. Thank you all for joining me. We get to do this outside. It's a stream I've wanted to do for a little bit um, because it's been raining, and so I thought, let's save the classroom supplies tier list until the rain chills out. We can actually be in the classroom, actually look at some supplies. So that's where we're at right now. This week will have less rain than last week. Um, the storms still have gone pretty crazy in California. Also, we have a weird lighting situation. Let's reorient ourselves. I haven't even pulled up the chat yet. I just wanted to get my good little introductory rant out of the way. So let me pull up in the chat and see who's hanging out here before we start ranking any supplies. Do, do, 
do. I am bad with this tech stuff. All right. Hello to all of my combo lords. Um, someone's wondering, although it's off topic, uh, I will answer the question because I like it. How good are academic discipline subreddits? I don't know what you mean about academic discipline. It, do you mean like an academic subreddit? Like if you go to like r slash math or something? Uh, I would say they're decent, but Reddit is a very fun site for me. I actually spend, that's one of the sites I'll scroll more often than, like I hardly ever go on Twitter or Instagram. I don't use TikTok hardly ever apart from posting on it. Um, so Reddit actually is where I spend some time digesting fun content of things, but it wouldn't be my end resource or my favorite resource necessarily for like learning. I've learned cool things from places like r slash math, but um, it's not quite going to be on the level of a better forum if you want really deep mathematical discussions. Uh, is this one called Stack Exchange? And I forget if it's called the sub portal is either called Math Exchange or Math Dot Stack Exchange, or maybe both those exist. But this thing called Stack Exchange has some really smart discussions on it, and that's where I'd go if you want like a forum like, uh, like a place where you see discussion type forum like interactions related to really smart math. Uh, that's a recommendation. Of course, as you know, I'm a huge Wikipedia fan. I also want to shout out Wolfram Alpha is a great website, and Wolfram Math World has a lot of resources connected to that. Also should shout out the OEIS, Online Encyclopedia of Integer Sequences. Um, someone's saying uh, they mean that such as like the ones with ask in the subreddit. Uh, like r slash ask science or something. Um, I'm not positive. I haven't done too much research on like if those discussion threads are super smart or not. I find that um, Reddit discussions to me are slightly more intelligent than a lot of other discussions online, but definitely not on the level of that math.stack exchange place where people are very high level thinking about concepts and interacting about like things that they have put hours of work into. So uh, I would put Reddit as a sort of mid tier social media in that I do think it's smarter than some, but it wouldn't want to be your end resource. And someone's saying it would be cool if r slash combo class grew into the ultimate academic sub, and that would be pretty awesome. I am someone who uses Reddit more than Discord, and we have all our chatting going on on Discord. Got so many combo lords sharing cool thoughts there. Please share some more thoughts on the Reddit, because we, and just random memes and dumb stuff, whatever. Uh, you can even post things that are making fun of me or whatever. I'm very thick skinned. Uh, but I want more content on that subreddit, and that can include academic discussions, because I think in combo class, all of us have some similar interests, which uh, can relate to the combinations of different fields with some underlying number theory and things that we like to have recur. So, uh, Thank you all for joining me here. Someone wants to talk about a prime conjecture. I'm sure we'll get into primes at some point here. Today, though, we're going to do a little bit more of having fun with ranking items. So let's see what's going on with these items. What we got here first appears to be pens. What type of pen is that? Okay, so these are some type of pen. I'm not sure. They're like different colors of pen or something. Maybe we should go to the more colorful classroom supplies tier list. And that one had a clock. Now nah, that had worse tiers. These are good. So colorful pens. I don't have colorful this type of pen. But I don't know if I need to get them before grade negative two. 
They're pretty cool, but they can only write on a particular type of paper. I'm going to put those in B tier. Ooh, dragged the wrong one. We're going to put those in B tier. That you get some good colors, but they're only functional on like white paper, really. How about a ruler? Now, we do have rulers in the combo class. <laughs> I knew a ruler would come up. So I brought a ruler. Some of the classroom supplies will be in my room or the house instead of out here. So I brought one or two, but some we're not going to get to visualize. The ruler we can. Now, there's a lot of debate in the world about how dumb is the system of inches and feet. Now, of course, the metric system's better because it's more logical to move things with a decimal. But if we were in base 12, the 12 inch to one foot conversion could be a decimal point shift. So we could kind of get the best of both worlds. Now I'm a base sixer, so I would redesign it to be more base six centric. But what I do want to point out is that although inches get mocked a lot and they kind of deserve it, centimeters have a lot more logic to them the 12 inches to a foot is more logical than 100 centimeters to a meter uh, not in terms of how you'd want your system to go but hard to explain but we're trapped in base 10 we gotta count our numbers in tens right now so i'm gonna give rulers well, they're not just about that. Rulers have many things we could analyze. Rulers can be a straight line, and ancient Greek people liked to know what could they construct with a straight edge and compass. Hmm. Due to this being a straight edge, I'm gonna put it pretty high. I'm gonna put that A tier. I don't think that means I need a new one because this works. So it won't go on our supply list, but it will get A tier. And we're gonna come back to rulers in terms of straight edge and compass constructions in some cool episodes. There's like, let me draw a type of number. This is wet, so I'm not sure if it'll work. Um, this is, oh no, it's not gonna work. Okay, I'll write it in my notepad here. I have a digital version, because the storm makes it hard to uh, write on wet whiteboards, but here we're gonna say one, 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 one. That type of number is called a Hyper 11. That's my nickname for them, technically known as a rep unit. But what about these? Hollow 11? Maybe even without the space? So these hollow 11s, as I nicknamed them in one episode, relate to which shapes are constructible. Not all of the hollow 11s, but some of them. Because numbers of this form, well, these are most interesting in binary. In binary, numbers of this form are one before a reset. Numbers of this form are one after a reset. One after this, it would go to the next one and a bunch of zeros. One before this was a one with a bunch of zeros. So this is one under a power of two, and this is one higher than a power of two. Now, some of the hollow 11s are in this family called Fermat primes, and those we will definitely have a cool focus on at some point in the future. We'll save those for later but they relate to why straight edges and compasses are pretty neat and tie a lot of concepts together, including these hollow 11 friends of our hyper 11s.
All right, thank you all. Let's join this with its friends. Although this is a small tip Sharpie, makes me want to think it's similar to those bees, but I don't really like the fine tip Sharpies. They're very useful, but the thicker tip Sharpies can get a little bit more learning done. I'm putting those in C tier. Ooh, this. Do I have my one of these around? Where is it? Okay, if you watch my bubble episode, I blew a bubble out of one of these. So it can measure angles, but we can also blow bubbles out of it. Pretty cool. Let's see. That's going to get an A tier for able to blow bubbles through and can help you measure angles. Wait, and it's a straight edge, so it's kind of better than a ruler. Hmm. Yeah, the ruler's cool, though. They can both be A tier. A pencil. Now, this is controversial. I used to love pencils. I wrote in pencils, I wrote with pencils in notebooks all the time. And then I went back and looked at some old notebooks and some of them, the pencil marks are all smudged and weird. And I realized, I don't know, I'm more of a pen guy. I think that pens have more of a lasting permanence. I grew to like ink and not mind ink stains on myself. And ink had this permanence, and ink dripped not only as a way of me physically writing some of the books I'll publish someday, but as themes in the books. You'll see ink in my books. Uh, so I'm more of a pen guy than a pencil guy. Because I was, I felt a little ripped off when I looked at some old notebooks that I'd written with in pencil. And they looked a little smudged. So... I'm going to give pencil B tier. Controversial. Pencils are cool, but I like pens more. Instead of writing with the pencil and erasing, I say write with a pen, use the thing, let it live its lifespan, and maybe it'll end up dying and becoming removed, but it'll have permanence while it's around. So, fine tip Sharpie went down, but other pens you'll see will get good stats. What are these? These are like some paint type of pen. Or glitter? Are those glitter pens? I'm going to say a glitter pen is a D tier. I don't need that in my classroom supply that much. And sorry that I'm not interacting with the comments much. I will uh, look at the comments a little more after I sort a few more. How about crayons? Now, crayons are funny. I have... Uh, so, a lot of these products are edible. Do not try this. This is not a recommendation to try this. But... Uh, it turns out that you can chew on a crayon and have no trouble. Uh, me and my friends used to eat crayons as a joke at parties. And I didn't swallow a crayon, but I've I, some of my friends have swallowed crayons. They're apparently non-toxic. Just a funny side tangent. Normally you use them to make colors, but they can't draw on that many surfaces. Like, crayons are really cool, but... How many things can you use them on? I'm going to give crayons a B tier. How about... Well, I don't know. Wait, no, these are the markers. I just got tricked by the Crayola. Hmm. Crayola markers. Colored markers. Probably B tier. That's okay. Okay. Sharpies. I'm going to give a Sharpie A tier. This is a powerful tool. These things, they call them a permanent marker. Obviously, 
there are many places you could take that gag. Like, if you draw it on something, is it really permanent? Like, it cannot be removed? We could get to some funny paradoxes, like the uh, immovable post and the unstoppable object. In any case, permanence is a funny concept, but Sharpies are useful. They do let me write equations on walls, and they stick longer than if you write with your dry erase markers. You gotta be careful with them, because you don't want to draw like a damaging thing on something. But a tool you have to be careful with, with a lot of powerful potential, deserves A tier. All right, what are these? It's hard to tell what these are. This is like a pack of a bunch of colors of Sharpies. So a pack of a bunch of colors of Sharpies, that's really dope. That is, I'm going to put it A, but if anyone wants to try and push it up to S, they can leave a comment. Any of these A's that people really like, they can comment and maybe I'll bump them to S. What's that? Is that just another ruler? Hmm. This is a strange tier list. We may, might not rank all the items. Let's just rank our favorites to start. Now, these pencils are the worst. I don't like these. The type where you click them, the mechanical pencil with that little fake eraser. I am not a fan of. That's an F tier. Sorry, <clears throat> mechanical pencil lovers. You guys, I know you're out there. A lot of people like these things. I'm sorry. These things suck. Mechanical pencil. Just trying to just be a pen. Okay, these are S tier. These, everyone who knows combo class knows that I had to shrink it again. Shrink. These are S tier. Dry erase markers and classic colors. Black, red, green, blue. That's what you want. Those are the staples. Well, no, they're not staples, but they're the... Words have too many things they mean. Okay, so this guy is the friend of the straight edge because we can draw circles and we can draw lines and then we can do ancient Greek constructions and see why heptagons are impossible to construct and see why you cannot double the cube or square the circle and all of these have interesting reasons so that's a fun episode for the future. We'll be um, going, pretending I'm in ancient Greece, going through some classic problems like the squaring of circles and the uh, can you make a heptagon and uh, proving why some of them are impossible. It would be proofs that would make ancient Greek people very frustrated, unfortunately, or very excited, depending on the philosopher. Now, this is a really bendy ruler. What's that? I don't need a bendy ruler. Maybe I do, but that's eh, a C-grade thing at best. We're just going to throw a bunch onto the tier list. Let's just make this happen. Is this just a regular ruler again? I cannot tell what that's supposed to be apart from just a ruler. Go with the other ruler. Oh, is this supposed to mean inches versus centimeters? Hmm. If we're doing an inches versus centimeters, centimeters wins. But inches does have a good idea that it wants to have 12 of a thing in the thing. 12 is a divisible number. So 
So, what else we got here? Pencil sharpener, an electric one. I'm not the biggest pencil fan, so if pencil gets B tier, sharpener's gonna get C tier. What else do we have? This is an organizer type notebook with a big curly thing around the side. See that big curly thing around the side? I don't like that curly thing, that's bad. So this thing is gonna go D tier because I think books could be bound way better than with that curly thing. That curly thing that goes around the side of some notebooks. That thing's so annoying. There are better ways to bind books. These fellas, now these, are S tier. When I said earlier in the stream that I only have been known for writing on whiteboards for a year or two, and before that I was known for writing in paper notebooks, these are some of those types. I've had many types of paper notebooks, uh, but I at least out of the 50 paper notebooks, that I have written half of the pages of in um, over my life, probably five of them or 10 of them looked like this. I have had some notebooks that looked similar to that, that have some very deep stories and interesting things in them. Those are S tier type notebooks. Bring one of those on a hike, why not? Useful little thing. Calculators. Where is it? Here. Calculators. All right, what should we calculate? Let's do a recreation of the most popular video combo class has ever done. So the most popular video I've ever filmed on both TikTok and YouTube is the same video. For some reason, the TikTok audience and the YouTube Shorts audience both really were captivated by me saying, hey, what's one divided by zero? Is it really infinity or is it not? Well, we get a divide by zero error. And if we look at the graph, which we could, actually, this is a good way to sequel it up. Now that we're on the computer, we can see on Desmos. So. Here, one divided by zero gave divide by zero error. Not sure if that's visible. And if we pull open Desmos for a moment, we can say that we want to know when y equals one over x and we ask what happens when x is zero well we're asking what happens when i go this way toward infinity and toward this way toward negative infinity there's a glitch it's a discontinuous function right there. So right there, because of that discontinuity, it's typically called undefined, because if I was trying to soar toward y equals 1 over a tiny thing from the positive way, I would soar toward infinity. But if I was trying to go y equals 1 over a tiny thing approaching 0 from the negative direction, we approach negative infinity. So when we ask what's going on at zero, it's kind of trying to be infinity and negative infinity at the same time. And there are ways that you could try to allow division by zero to be a thing. You know, we allowed i to be the square root of negative one, why can't we make up a new letter that is one divided by zero? Well, people have tried, and you can have fun trying, 
And the problem is that you're going to lose some typical rules of arithmetic that you like, that you're used to. So you're going to have to rewrite all of the typical rules you know and you're used to uh, to include a little suffix that's like, except in the case of da 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 da. So it's probably not worth rewriting all of the rules of arithmetic to be allowed to say one divided by zero equals the letter V or whatever. However, there are ways people try and get around it. And maybe one day we'll look at something called a wheel. There are a lot of ways of describing worlds of numbers. One of which is you can have a field, one of which is called a ring, one of which is called a group, and these are all different categorizations of things. And there's a lot of places we could go, but I got to redirect my attention back towards the supplies tier list. And let me take a peek at our comments. So, yep, we got some uh, fellow haters of the mechanical pencils and spiral bound notebooks. I agree, those things are overrated. We don't need them around as much. And someone says the bendy ruler sucks as a straight edge. It gets malformed. All right, well, because of that, if bendy ruler gets malformed, D tier. I will trust my comment, the commenter on that. Someone says zero to the zeroth power on most calculators is one. Let's see what this one says. Now, zero to the zeroth power is defined differently in different fields. So there are times where it makes sense to say it's just undefined. We're not going to try and deal with it. There's other times it makes sense to call it zero and other times it makes sense to call it one. And the kind of glitch there is that normally zero to the power of something gets zero. But normally something to the power of zero gets one. So you kind of hit that glitch already. When you say zero to the power of zero is gonna get a value, you have to change your original rules that zero to the power of anything zero and anything to the power of zero is one because how could those both be true for zero to the zero? So that's why it's often called undefined, but some fields, uh, some fields of combinatorics and other fields decide to call it one. Let's see what this one calls it. Zero to the power of zero. Domain error. So, they have a particular error. That was actually a fun quest I was on as a kid, trying to figure out how many errors there were. That was a fun game when I was bored in math class, sitting around, okay, I got my calculator. I know the parabola you're talking about. I'm fiddling around. Oh, there's a new type of error, domain error. What other types of error can I hit? And so that was kind of a fun quest. And that's actually a way to learn, figure out what doesn't work. Looking for errors is kind of cool. It's like, okay, I'm looking for the holes, then I know what to avoid, and I know what I can't do. Someone asked if my beard grew like an inch in a day. So here's the thing. Normally, my hair and my beard are a bit shorter, but I've been through all phases in life. I've had it down to my shoulders. I've had it almost I have like buzz cut like super short. Um, I've been clean shaven, this type of beard, all sorts of stuff. And normally I let it ride out a while, just go through a few different looks, <laughs> procrastinate a haircut and then cut it. And I emphasize that a little extra heavy this year where I really kind of purposefully procrastinated the haircut and shave because I like the idea of teaching everything I want to teach in grade negative one in this chaos and this calamity that I've built out of this mud, which now has dice in it. And 
in this chaos and calamity. Um, okay. Uh, in any case, sorry. I'm going to get back to the tier list. I keep getting sidetracked. So calculators on the tier list are going to go way up. Someone's wondering if I wear the lab coat on camera only or everywhere I go. Uh, definitely not everywhere I go. I wear it more often on camera because when I started filming, it was like a mix of it's practical and I think it looks interesting. And then it proved itself to be practical. So I kept wearing it. And then when I'm like going on a weird hike with friends or when I'm like having a campfire, I might have it on a time like that. If I'm like going shopping, I'm not going to have it on. But while I film, uh, I learned that people like to see uh, the crazy chaotic mad scientist vibe. So I figured since it is protecting me, why not wear the lab coat out here a bunch? And why not? <clears throat> typically only get one new one per grade and we can watch the grade happen on the lab coat and the clocks and everything. So there will be some resets when grade two, a negative two hits. When we get back to the top of the clock, some modular shifts will occur. So I'll expect that it's getting really overgrown and probably like my private students who some of them might not even know about this channel might be like, what is going on? Um, I might not shave until March because grade negative two is coming out in April. Someone's wondering how you submit a conjecture, submit a conjecture you found and Typically a simple conjecture like the type that you've mentioned there will have already been mentioned or discovered by someone. Um, or if you, oh no, you mean a conjecture. So something that hasn't been proven yet. You think your conjecture is that the digital sum of the product of two primes with a difference of four is either three or five. Um, we could try and think about how that would work uh, with digit sums. Now, all primes are either the number two or three, or are one more or one less than a multiple of six. So we could try and work around that. Digital roots do, or digital sums, which lead to roots, um, do relate to base 10 but yeah I don't know I can think through that one sometime if you want to know where to submit a conjecture um, I'm not sure where the best place is maybe on the combo class discord or subreddit why don't you make a thread on the subreddit and say this is my conjecture and then some other people can check if they either find a counter example or a proof Someone says they all need to get white coats. You don't. Uh, to be a combo lord, you do not have to dress uh, as a mad scientist. Don't worry. People can copy me if they want. I won't mind, but it is not something I'm like requesting or anything. I want you guys to learn my attitude. I don't care if you guys look like me. Um, and someone's saying also zero to the zero is indeterminate. And that is sometimes the term used. If I was using the word undefined, sometimes those are actually used differently. And sometimes zero to the zero is more so called the indeterminate type, whereas one divided by zero is more so called the undefined type. Kind of complicated why they classify it as such. Uh, someone wondered if, let's see what it was. Someone wondered if I have ADHD, um, possibly a mild amount. So I have dealt with a lot of mental issues in the past and I have a very strange brain and I have seen doctors for mental issues such as panic attacks and depression and 
for some doctors who thought that possibly I have some bipolar, which if I do, it's quite mild. It's not been anything that's like, my manic phases are like the me you like. So it's not like the manic that sends someone to a hospital when someone has it really bad. Um, but <clears throat> I have been diagnosed in the past with having a mild amount of bipolar, which I'm not sure if I believe their classification. It was the, I forget the name, but there's two types of bipolar. One doctor said I had the milder type of the bipolars. Um, but I'm not positive if I believe that or not, if that's the main thing making up my brain chemistry. Everyone's weird. And my brain especially, I think, is a combo <laughs> of a lot of different things. So I don't think there's like one singular thing that you would pinpoint it with. I think maybe I have, I'm like an inch onto the like ADHD spectrum and like an inch onto a few other spectrums possibly. But mostly just a strange chaotic combo. I have had doctors diagnose make diagnosis notes that said they wondered if I had ADHD. So I wasn't diagnosed with it, but they doctors thought there was a chance that was involved in my brain chemistry. You'll never know a 100% answer on what name classifies what problem you're going through or, and it's not even always a problem, just what different type of thing you're going through. But my brain's extra weird and extra comboed up. So, I would say I probably have a tiny amount of ADHD mixed with a tiny amount of a lot of other stuff. Also, lots of other random nice comments. <laughs> am I the Antichrist? I am not. Although I wouldn't call myself a Catholic, if you look at the ideas that are attributed to Jesus Christ himself, those were quite beautiful. I believe in loving your neighbor. I believe in things like that. I believe in a lot of the original ideas that were attributed to this Jesus Christ. So, although I'm not a Catholic, I do follow Love Thy Neighbor and some of those. Someone wondered if I've ever met a famous mathematician. I haven't. Um, I haven't met many famous people at all. Actually, randomly, my uncle who died was friends with John C. Riley, the actor. So I met John C. Riley and chatted with him once at a wedding. The, that actor who's like Will Ferrell's friend and stuff. Um, that's probably the main celebrity I've ever met. Um, I don't know if I could meet a mathematician now, one of the ones who I would love to meet someday is Terence Tao. Terence Tao is probably the greatest living mathematician. The other person I would equally like to meet is a mathematician named Clifford Pickover, who's a writer and philosopher and all sorts of stuff and has done less mathematical innovation than Terence Tao, but has done some cool mathematical innovation and has written some of my favorite books. So uh, those are some of the ones I would love to link up with. Really though, I watch a lot of YouTube and if I had a choice of who I could link up or collaborate with of any type of person, anyone in the world, some of my first would be the mathologer guy and the three blue on brown guy and doing a presentation on number file and uh, the stand up maths guy, Matt Parker. Uh, those guys I would love to collaborate with. Those are awesome. And I was going to list a few like uh, musicians that I would like to collaborate with, but we'll save that for a musical stream. I'm going to be doing a stream at some point. Uh, not long from now, like today or tomorrow, I think it would be fun where I <clears throat> pull open GarageBand, a simpler programming tool for programming music and make a beat from scratch. Show you guys how to make a digital song from nothing. So that'll be a fun stream we'll do in a bit. 
And whoever said they're making a code to check their conjecture, that is a great place to start. If you want to publish a conjecture, it would be a lot more helpful to have a stat to back it up that you could say, I've checked all the numbers up through this size and not all of them follow my conjecture. So I conjecture that all numbers do. And that would definitely make it sound better than if you just say like one example. So codes always help. Someone saying Terrence Tao is not like Euler, he's overrated. I completely disagree that he's overrated, but he's definitely not Euler. I don't think he would say he's Euler. He's a humble guy. Terrence Tao is not going to say that he was Euler. Euler was this once in a millennia brilliant mind. Euler is the one who the aliens are going to bring their time machine for and Ramanujan. But um, Terrence Tao's not overrated. He's not Euler, but he's also a youngish guy. He has a lot of time left in his life to keep cracking more and more cool stuff. And that guy posts sometimes on that stack exchange thing I mentioned. I've seen posts that he's done like a brilliant set of paragraphs on that stack exchange thing. And I'm shivering, it is freezing cold out here. <laughs> okay. We might need to do some exercise. Someone says three blue, one brown really sparked a renaissance of math animations on YouTube. It's true. Uh, so many math channels copy three blue, one brown, and it's not necessarily bad. Like he's okay with it. He made his code public. This thing called Manim is a code he made that he made public for people to use. So uh, yeah, I think the three blue, one brown style animations flooding YouTube I'm totally cool with, and I think he is too. Um, however, it's time for a new type of flood, folks. The punk mathematicians, the punk scientists. Uh, and by punk, I don't mean that we're gonna cause people harm, we are nice, we are cool. I just mean we're approaching it in an unconventional way. We're breaking a few rules in our quest. So, um, I think that even though a lot of them look like three blue on brown, more of them should have the combo class vibe. I can't wait until I see knockoff channels with like trying to break clocks and whiteboards and stuff. That'll be golden. Someone wondered if I'm left-handed. I'm not. My mom is. She's left-handed, but I'm right-handed. Um, someone wondered if I ever get brain fog. Yeah, I hold my brain to a high standard, so if I'm ever not thinking really creatively, I'm like, oh no! Uh, but I run pretty quick, so during each day, I usually have points that are non-fog. But there's uh, definitely moments, you know. Everyone's brain goes in different phases. You need a balance in your life to not overheat it, you know. I, I teach math in a way that is chaotic, not just because I think it'll help learn and help get more random people to watch, but also because it's fun to me and I think it's sustainable for my lifestyle. So, yeah. Someone's wondering if I have any favorite scientists. Um, I don't actually know quite as much about different scientists. I've read some really cool things about Nikolai Tesla, the original guy, not like a Tesla car, but like the actual Tesla. Um, read some very cool things about him. And um, I'm not sure. I mean, I know like really cool tales of like these ancient things that people did, but I don't really know as much about science as math, so I don't think I am prepared to pick a favorite scientist yet. I am prepared to fit, pick a favorite mathematician, and it is Euler. And then not far after that list, we're going to put Ramanujan, Gauss, John Conway, and... Um, a little under those, I'm putting Terrence Tao. I like him. I don't care what the comment thinks. He's not a under. He's not overrated. 
He is rated. He is properly rated. Um, oh my God, it's cold out here. I should have brought an extra layer. Um, I might need to grab a coat in a minute. Someone's wondering if I believe in true love. Um, I do in a way. I don't think that there's like a singular bond that like these two people have to be together and anyone else in the world who wouldn't work for. I do believe that people can build loving bonds with other humans and that there's types of that that could fall into like, I want to spend most of all my days with you and I don't care about having other partners or whatever that you would classify as I think what you mean by true love. There's also love between friends. I love my friends so much. So, you know, love isn't just for romantic people. I do believe that you could have a romantic love, but it's not like a, it had to be these two out of the billion. It's just like, you gotta work around and find someone who's similar to you on a similar quest as you, who has some things, and then their differences too, whose differences are compatible with your differences. Someone's wondering if I drink, and I actually don't. Um, I haven't drank in 19 months. I used to have a huge alcohol problem. I used to drink all the time. And that's a whole nother story, a whole nother era which will have a lot of footage accompanying it. And there will be memoirs and stuff like that. Oh, and yeah, a comment even remembered that. Thank you guys for remembering. Uh, it's not easy. Like I went to a party a few days ago and I was one of only a few people who wasn't drinking alcohol there. Um, of course, I still love chatting with my friends and hanging out and all sorts of stuff. So. You don't have to drink to have a good time. You can for some people. For me, it was a curse in my life. For me, it was dragging me away from the abilities that you guys see me putting to the world, dragging me away from the state where I could be making videos and making books or anything I wanna make. And so I cut it out of my life. Uh, of course, I don't care if my friends, you know, have a beer when they come over here or whatever, if they're not on that arc that I was on. I do have one or two other friends who were on that arc and quit alcohol as well. Um, let's see, a lot of interesting thoughts. I can't answer all of them, but I can answer some of them. Someone's wondering if I would accept if my girlfriend had a male best friend. Uh, pretty random question, but I don't have a girlfriend, but if I did, sure, why not? Yeah, if I, if I had a girlfriend, what that relates, when you have a partner, that relates to trust. And so if you're gonna trust someone, then I don't care what gender their best friend is as long as they tell me that they're not doing anything weird with them, and I trust that or whatever the setup is. So I would be totally fine with that. Someone's wondering why I do everything outdoors. I like the outdoors, I love nature. And I think that part of it is just me loving nature. Part of it is due to practicality because I have a really small room inside. I stream in my room sometimes, but I have been this week a bit while it's been raining, but my room's small. It would be hard to fit much. Couldn't make it a cool, crazy, chaotic set. And out here in the outdoors, things can shatter and break. And it's like a separate zone that I can be careful of. Make sure there's it's the right type of chaos for itself without it being like where I sleep or whatever. Don't have to worry about sleeping on glass while I'm worrying about no cat glass for the cats or whatever. So. Having the outdoor classroom separates it in a good way where it can be my set because I don't have a separate room in the house to separate it to. I have filmed some things in my living room, but I live with my family. And so when it's like raining out here and I have to film with my living room, I have to kind of like ask some favors and be like, oh, can you guys be quiet for an hour or whatever? Out here, you know, I can kind of just be loud and hope the neighbors don't hate me. Another reason is that the outdoors makes things have the cycle of nature, the cycle of death and rebirth, of growth and destruction go faster. And I kind of like that. 
I kind of like the idea of each grade of the show. We get a bunch of new props, and over time, they slowly get destroyed throughout the grade. By destroyed, not like on purpose, like, haha, we broke them, but like, we're going to use them so good, they're not going to be functional after we used them. They're going to have taught so much, there will be nothing left of them. So, uh, part of why it's outside is I kind of wanted what I knew would happen with the rain and the birds and the cats and me able to light stuff on fire and stuff that the cycles of destruction and growth will happen faster sort of. And with the seasons, we will feel the seasons. There'll be rainy times and sunny times. There'll be growing times and dormant times. And since each grade will be somewhat around one year each, I mean, that's not like how long they are, but I'm imagining I'll start each new grade somewhat around a year after the last. They're going to have somewhat of a seasonal feel. And I like that because, you know, as humans, we get one big cycle of life, but we get to observe tons of smaller cycles. There are cycles of the days, there are cycles of the years. And so let's watch all those cycles tick. And to see the cycles that the days and years do, being indoors kind of loses some of it. I love nature. Plus, if there's aliens watching this in the future on a telescope, and like, uh, you know, the light of this would take a while to get there. So if the, this scene right now of me waving, this light, is being observed in a hundred thousand years by an alien somewhere on their telescope. Hi. So more likely for that too when we're outside. Um, do I hate the Antichrist? Um, I don't think I believe in an Antichrist. So I don't think I can hate it. Um, Someone's uh, saying that they think, uh, well, I'm not going to go into that. Uh, no need to have too many gender stereotypes around here. I think some of those things are overrated. I have friends who are girls who have guy traits. I have friends who are guys who have girl traits. I don't mean like with their body even necessarily, just like how their actions are or with their body. Um, but no need to like... Uh, care too much about what gender people are in the combo class. That is not our priority to worry about. Um, cause everyone, I believe, and, and to be clear by it's not our priority. I mean that we are respectful of whatever anyone wants to be or wants to do. Um, so yeah. And, uh, as we can see some, People have some thoughts that, um, whatever. Uh, we don't need to go too much into the worrying about gender stuff. If I did have a girlfriend, I would not care what gender her friends were. That's not, I, I roll with people I trust. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna let someone be my girlfriend who I don't trust. So, um, Let's see, someone was saying they found the derivative of a modular function is really cool to graph. And maybe we'll do that. Uh, we should probably rank the rest of these supplies and then we can maybe think of pulling open our Desmos. Uh, cool, we got some fans out there in Finland. Uh, I've never, all the places that you guys um, live. I've never had the chance to visit. Someday I want to go on more combo quests that involve traveling. So there could be some really long field trips in a future grade. And they'll have a cool fun purpose where it'll be like, I'll look up some really rare type of bird or berry or something that exists in some foreign place. And then in one episode, maybe I'll just be like, hey, you guys want to go on a field trip? And then like the next like five episodes will be wherever that berry grows or the quest to get there. So hopefully I'll get to travel more around where all of you folks come from. Awesome that the internet's here. That's something I thought about. On one of the other tier lists, there was a computer 
And it's not on this one, but it really made me think about where I would put computer on this tier list. Because I don't like, com I don't want to like computers. I'm old fashioned. Computers cause a lot of trouble. But computers have helped me talk to you guys right now. Without a computer, I wouldn't be able to communicate with you guys in this way. So I would have to like grudging, begrudgingly put um, a computer in S tier just because of how helpful it is for me, even though I don't want to. I would have to, maybe I would put it A tier because I'm old fashioned. I don't know. Um, so let's see. Uh, we may have to run and grab a charger in a minute. It's my computer has a decent amount, but my phone where I look at the chat is actually pretty low. And this screen's way too crowded for me to try and find room for the chat on there. Um, someone's wondering what the lunchbox is doing there. And it's, you know, school supplies. When you go to, uh, they're assuming that it's maybe for a younger school. But when you're in like elementary school, as they call it here, uh, a lot of kids have that sort of lunchbox. I mean, maybe more so nowadays have more of like a felt one or something or a bag or I don't know um when I was younger I had a bag my lunch would just be in some sort of bag um I didn't need a lunch box necessarily but a lot of kids had lunch boxes so here's the thing lunch box is not crucially useful but it's a kind of fun item where it's like yeah you got your lunch box it's not something I'm going to buy for the classroom, but I'm going to give it B tier. Calculator is, we talked about that a minute ago. I pulled up the calculator, got very carried away. That was where we diverged from this, is S tier. Calculators are dope. I love calculators. Okay. And also, especially S tier, now that this calculator, this exact one, is the thing that got me 8 million views on YouTube and like a ton on TikTok too. It's crazy that this calculator really helped out combo class. Um, the other calculator you folks got to see someday is the calculator in my attic that I stole from a storeroom when I was 13. My school had these weird adding machine calculators in this storeroom and all I can say for now is that there was a calculator heist and I need to find where I put the uh, calculator in my attic so I can bring it out to the combo class. And uh, so the per I knew when I made a calculator heist when I was 13, it would come in handy someday. And then I forgot about it for years. And believe it or not, a massive silly plug-in calculator is exactly what the combo classroom needs. So I was correct when I pulled that calculator heist in advance. Um, thank you to whoever said they're teaching high school and they like to try and mirror some of my teaching. That is very nice. That is, in fact, one of my bigger goals is that instead of me being a teacher one-on-one -on -one so much in the future, which I still do a bit these days, I have a private lesson later today, for example, um, I want to try and teach techniques about learning and teaching. And I love the idea of my Demotro attitude spreading out into more schools. That is a goal. I love the concept of school, but I'm sort of, the combo class is sort of pitted against the modern schooling system to a degree because a lot of the things that I think should be taught aren't, or the things they teach I think are unnecessary, or things like that. So there's a lot we can change with schools and um, just a slow and steady growth maybe. And there are some teachers who are able to employ that well, so awesome to that teacher who commented that they're using some of my techniques. So, a lot of fun comments. Love you all, and I'm going to go back to my tier list now. Highlighters are all right. They're not great. So if you print something out and highlight it, that's useful. However, if you highlight something in a book, it kind of ruins the book. It's kind of only useful for now the book is about the part of the book focused on this thesis. Um, so it kind of redirects the book if you do it to a book. You got to do it on something you like extra printed or something. Now, 
if you're gonna highlight, you might as well just underline or annotate anyway. Like underlining's not that different than highlighting. So highlighters are kind of a dud. They have uses. We're putting them in C tier. Uh, and different colors of them, someone said, are good for language learning. Yeah, if they had shown multiple colors of these next to each other, I probably would have given it a tier higher. Um, so, scissors, why are these different? What's the difference between these scissors? They're giving me, like, two of a lot of things. Um, are these, like, some safety type or one of them or something? Whatever. We're calling them both scissors. Scissors are an A tier item. Scissors are useful, not the coolest thing in the entire world, but they do the trick on cutting stuff. They're helpful, mildly dangerous. Gotta be careful with them. You know, it's one of those old uh, idioms, don't run with scissors. I mean, it's not even really an idiom. It's more like a cliche that one would warn someone to not run with scissors. Uh, so be careful with your scissors. I'm sure I got a pair out here somewhere. Do I? Where's the scissors? Here, yeah. So we have, okay. We've been doing a disservice to this tier list. Let me pull these boxes closer. This is where my classroom supplies are, are in these boxes. So we have a variety of things like the permanent markers and stuff that I've been discussing. The problem is that most of my classroom supplies are less conventional than what they put on there. Like, oh, 227 grams of rubber bands. You ever, what is it? Um, half pound. You ever buy a half P of rubber bands? Um, there's, our classroom supplies are a little unconventional, like plastic fruits for decorations. Uh, you know how there's a trope about teachers getting an apple from their, from the best student or whatever. We got a plastic apple. That's good. I actually prank my friends sometimes with these. I love to, this one's not that realistic, but I have a slightly more realistic one of these strawberries. And I'll eat a straw, like when I have strawberries, I'll get this and I'll be snacking on a few and I'll eat a strawberry and then offer my friend one and hand them this. And it's really funny. <laughs> They're like, okay, wait, what? What is this? Um, where are the wooden pencils? I don't have them. Actually, I have a box of them somewhere. But, um, you know what's funny? Uh, speaking of school supplies, where's my big school sign? Where's my big, like, uh, sign? I should have put this in the thumbnail. Stop. School crossing. Don't ask me where I got this. I didn't steal it from a school crossing though. I'm a good person. So this we're pretty set on. Do they have one of these in the tier list? Nope. If they did, I would give it a B tier. It's not that, oh no, it's, it's useful. If you're at like a, here, it, it, it's B tier useful here, but in reality, that could be an S tier item to save some kids. Someone said they always thought the fruits were real and some are. That is a game you can play when you watch combo class videos. Which fruits are real and vegetables? It's uh, some are, some aren't. Like these are real. Um, this is a real potato. This is a real pumpkin. This is a fake apple. <laughs> Some fake pears. So, uh, that's a game you can play in combo class. Ooh, here, look. We got some, uh, fake grapes. So, <laughs> um, I bought a bag of assorted plastic fruit for fun to put around here. But what I really should get is a bunch of one type <clears throat> to put on a tree. I want to like have a cherry tree, but it's just like a million plastic cherries hanging from it. And then I can double trick people because I'll be like, come to the combo classroom. I'll be eating a cherry and then I'll be like, oh, well, 
you can have a cherry, check out the cherry tree and then it'll be plastic. And then I'll be like, I also got a loquat tree and they'll be like, oh God, there's gonna be plastic again, but it's not. There is actually a loquat tree over there. Someone asked, do I wear the white coat when I'm teaching one-on-one? -on -one? Um, I often don't, typically not, because that's typically just in my room and it's often music lessons. I have a few math students, but it's mostly music. And uh, that just happens to be the day job I stumbled into to make my income. So it's usually like me with a guitar or me with a music book, as opposed to needing protection from the elements. Someone said the pencil's gotta be higher, otherwise the notebooks are pointless. Pencils lose out because of pens do they have a good they don't have a good pen on here this is a dumb tier list all right we're we're finding a better we're going to the cartoony one i found earlier there was one called classroom objects that was good this one had pens the problem was the axes look they, they weren't graded normally. It's based just, I always use, I usually use, I often use, I sometimes use, I rarely use, I never use. Um, so we're gonna pretend it's the normal tier. Wait, and they kind of have the colors, is that backwards from out sometimes is? Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. Um, so on this one, let's just see what's the extra important ones. We haven't put anything on the list of supplies because we've just been chatting. But what we do need is, um, I don't know. I bought a lot of whiteboard markers. Let's see what is on here. So backpack, do we need that? We're, no, we're good. Chalkboard, no, lose out to whiteboard. Whiteboard wins. All right, we'll put new whiteboard and lab coat. We are gonna get those. Now, of course we gotta put more clocks. Um, oh, the calculator from my attic, from the heist. Um, let's see. Now, I may also start, like I mentioned one time, a clock P.O. box, so we'll see if that has any luck. If I try that next month, maybe I'll get mailed a few clocks. Um, someone's wondering if there's any tips for checking if a number is prime on Java. I don't know Java, but uh, it probably will be helpful to look at a video I made recently on this channel that's like a bonus lesson on this channel called, you may have already seen it, that's about uh, which numbers you need to check to know if something's prime. And basically it's about why uh, you need to only check if it can divide any prime number up to and including its square root. So like if I'm wondering if 100 is prime, I have to check all the primes up to and including 10, if it can divide them and I would find on the number two or the number five that it's not prime. So uh, basically you kind of just, I mean, there are shortcuts. There are other cool things you can try and figure out algorithms. It's a big quest for mathematicians. Can we factorize quicker? But um, to start the easiest from scratch way is check if it can divide any primes up to and including its square root. So, um, someone asked what's a loquat? It's a type of fruit. Uh, loquats are somewhat tropical tasting. They're these, you can eat the skin or not. And they have a big seed, but you eat around that and they're pretty good. And we have a tree of these. It's down a rare corridor. You wanna see down a rare corridor, folks? It's a rare corridor. You see that bamboo? Sometimes it overgrows and fills the whole corridor. You see that tree behind the bamboo? That's the loquats. So, 
looking at this list just because it's better and more comprehensive this shows me why pencil would be lower pencil loses to pen in my opinion pens are better than pencils here uh ink stain mania that's what we end up dealing with but I, I don't know when i looked at some old notebooks that my pencil marks got smudged i turned to a pen guy so someone asked what's my google search history uh, if they mean what was recommended for Loquat, it's going to be like nothing. I use a new browser for my streams. So the only things that have been searched on this browser are from the past streams. Um, cause, because I don't want uh, to worry about my normal search history flying around. I use a different browser. Um, so what else do we got here? This is fun. This is going to be a fun stream activity. This will be a meditational stream while we build a Lego. Got this old crunched Lego box. Despite the damage to the box, you know, I'm assuming the Legos are fine. So I'm going to build Lego on one of these streams. Now, in my classroom, we have more supplies than they put on the list. Like, personally, I would put can opener as a classroom supply. You need a can opener in your classroom, but that's not even on the list. So we sort of abandoned our last list because this one looks more colorful and has more variation, even though it has worse axes. Um, so let's sort these really quick for fun. This is going to be our very rough version of the tier list. Um, and we're not saying it's based on always use. We're saying like in a hypothetical world where the world, where I like in a perfect grade negative three, which items would I be using this amount? So backpack, I usually use that. That's super useful. No, oh wait, backpacks are good. I love backpacks. Backpacks do so much. You can go on a mission and have just whatever you want. Backpacks are great. Chalkboards, low. Whiteboards, high. Okay, chalkboards are kind of cool. And we're not doing often use. We're treating these like S-A-B. I don't like these axes. S-A-B-C-D-F. Bookshelf of books, S tier. Stack of books like this, uh, I guess less than on a bookshelf. I don't know what the difference of these is. It's like messy books versus normal books. Okay, these books get there. Uh, more books go there. Calculator, S tier. Calendar. Ooh, you guys got to check out my latest main channel episode about how bad the calendar is. Our calendar currently sucks. Calendar, bad. Good to have around to teach, I guess. But it should be a different calendar. Chair. Very useful. <laughs> you need a chair in your classroom. We have a lot of chairs. <laughs> so, chalk. We're putting that with the white with the chalkboard down there. Clocks, S tier, definitely. So, someone said the tiers can maybe be renamed. Okay, yeah, we can. You're right. I didn't know I could rename these. G. G is even worse than F. Anything gets an F, it's getting a G instead. Um, so, now G sounds like good. It's like you call someone like, hey, what's up, G? That's a compliment. So, we're going to go back to F. Classic F. Now, F gets lowercase. That's how lame it is. So, Colored pencils, I like them. A tier, they're cool. You can only write on certain surfaces with them, but they're cool. Computer, that's the one I had trouble with. See, I got it, it's so hard. I wanna, part of me wants to put it S tier because without it, I can't communicate with you guys. But computers aren't the greatest learning experience. If you were actually like teaching in a classroom these things are cooler than a computer. These are real life. 
Computers are good, but uh, just it has to be A. Can't be S tier. Computers are not as much of like a universal, beautiful staple as um, a backpack or something. Um, someone asked my opinion about the top G, probably referring to the guy called Andrew Tate. Uh, that guy is ridiculous, super dumb, uh, not a good guy, causes a lot of trouble for society very offensive beliefs about what he thinks about women and about other things. Uh, so a guy with a very skewed sense of reality uh, who is now arrested rightfully for a lot of things he did. So uh, I'm glad he's arrested. I think he's kind of a scumbag and uh, no reason. He probably won't be talked about in a few years. Um, also, the, okay, the funniest thing ever. This is how you know the guy is so lame. Uh, I saw that he's convincing other streamers, his line he'll tell other streamers is that being bald is better because people with hair are going to have this weird confident bias or something. There's something about if you have hair, it's wrong. Uh, it was a very, he had a very funny convoluted way of justifying why him being bald is better uh, because he was actually embarrassed by being bald, which is okay to be, but uh, you can just say that you're bald instead of saying that people with hair are pulling some scheme. Um, and so it said he's got a billion dollars. Uh, okay. Well, good luck with that in the Romanian jail. Um, I don't care if someone's rich money's dumb. I only want enough money to be able to spread my ideas. It's going to take that. So Unfortunately, I need to tap into my hustler self. I used to be a hustler of various sorts, which sounds dumb, but I've, I, I've had ways I know how to make money and I don't want to have that be my life. It's dumb. Thinking about making money is silly and ridiculous. And so my, I realized when I'm making combo class that it's like, if I'm going to spread my ideas to a big part of the world, I need to hustle a little bit because I need money to hire people to help me and have a big productive team to have good editing and cameras and gear and stuff. So I have had to reactivate some of my hustler self to try and like make money to hire people and stuff. Uh, but money overall is dumb. It is caused so much stress and problems. People should think less about money. And people, I don't think that that guy who has a billion dollars and is really trying to prove his masculinity so hard and oh, I gotta prove I'm a man, is having a better life than someone who's just happy and has enough money to eat. So uh, I respect people who are happy. I respect people who make others happy. I respect people who make good products for the world. Um, I don't care how rich someone is. Someone's wondering my favorite thing in my class, my least favorite thing. Remember not to spam comments, guys. Otherwise, I'll have to, I'll kick you out of the chat if you say the same thing like 50 times. I will answer it because it's a good comment, but uh, in the future, just leave it once. Um, so my least favorite thing in my classroom would probably be... All right, for some reason you wanna keep doing that, so I'm putting you in the thing called timeout, whatever that means. Um, so, let's see. Uh, someone wants to do my least favorite thing in my classroom. Um, then I would say probably this clock right now because it's moldy, even though it looks really cool. And I have to throw it away really soon because it's moldy. And I feel so bad that I'm gonna have to throw it away because it's this big, nice clock that the rain made it mold. And it's way too moldy to keep around here. Maybe I can salvage some of the frame, but. That's what I'm going with for now. 
my least favorite thing in the combo classroom. I don't know. I like it here. I like my combo classroom. Um, so yeah, about the money stuff, remember combo lords that money is not the most important thing. I am as a philosophy, like I feel so awkward whenever I'm like, by the way guys, check out my Patreon or stuff like that. I need to do that a little bit to hustle to have enough money to make good content. So once in a while, I unfortunately have to play that capitalist game of like, please help me on Patreon and stuff. But that's just to make the operations spread more knowledge and to get me a good team working and stuff, uh, the ability to hire more people throughout the week and stuff. So I actually apologize for all the hustling that I uh, do or have to do because I think hustling to make money is not really something to be proud of. The fact that someone can like, I hustled really hard and I made a bunch of money. It's kind of cool, but I would be way more proud if I made a product than if I had just a lot of the currency that everyone else could get the same type of. I like being different. I don't want to just have more of the same thing other people have. I want to be a diff make a different thing than they have. So, in the combo classroom, we say money is overrated. Money is boring. So, let's have our goal. My goal, unfortunately, has to be to make a bunch of money so I can spread the combo world dream. But your guys' goals should just be have enough money to not think about money. That's normally my goal. Oh no, my battery's super low. I'm at 4%. Okay, I really gotta get a charger. Okay, hopefully the stream doesn't crash before that. I'm gonna run and grab a charger. Um, leave your comments on where the rest of these should go in the tier list or on what classroom supplies I should buy. Returning, hopefully the stream didn't die. My battery is super low. Let's get this plugged in.
All right, we got to relocate. We're going a little further so that we can uh, get our charge. Ooh, 1%. I think we're good, just in time. Okay. So, um, let me grab a chair a little closer. We're gonna be at a weirder angle for a moment, but I'm actually closer to all my supplies. Um, to wrap up that thought, money is boring, but it is true that if anyone ever wants to support, I will put it toward cool classroom supplies like this and editing. And uh, I like to think of combo class almost like a charity because if I ever get rich from combo class, I will make a bunch of free science museums and make a bunch of free online resources for everyone. I want to teach the world, so uh, if anyone has any rich relatives, definitely tell them that uh, combo class is the good charity to support. Um, in any case, on our tier list, because this is more interesting than money, you notice you don't need money in a classroom, you just need cool supplies like this which do cost money, but to think about the supplies, crayons were good, we gave crayons a B, they're fun. Uh, what's this, the desk? Desk is S tier, you need a desk in your classroom. I love my desk. We're gonna have a desk arc each season, so you guys, uh, each desk will have its own saga and its own lore, and sometimes rewatch the main channel episodes back and you'll see the whole progression of what's, that's still part of the desk. That, this is part of the desk. <laughs> These are all parts of the desk. Um, so, yeah. Uh, each desk per grade will get a new desk and it will have its own saga. Um, what do we have here? Is this some type of eraser or something? Assuming that's an eraser, I'm going C tier because that looks like a dud. I don't know. You don't need an eraser without a pencil. Um, trash can. That's pretty useful. A tier. That's useful. Um, globe. Hmm. Okay. Globe. This is the first thing that we're actually adding here somewhere. We're going to get a globe. That sounds good. Who wants a globe in grade negative two? Globe's gonna get, here's the thing. Globe is kind of B tier, but I just don't have one yet. Nah, okay, globe's A tier, globe's fun. Okay, glue. Um, glue is B tier. Glue can come in handy. This is like a weird little side type of backpack, like a little computer case or something. I don't like that fella as much. Just give me a good backpack. Lockers, nah, screw lockers. I don't want lockers, just want a good backpack. Just want less textbooks to carry in school. I remember that was the thing back in the day. Why do you need a locker? Because each class makes you carry a textbook this big. You don't even read the whole textbook in the class, come on. So, um, lockers are D grade. Lunchbox, C grade. Map that's not a globe, B grade, because globe is more accurate than trying to flatten it on a projection. What's this? What is this? I actually just don't know what that is. I'll leave that there. Um, a black marker, kind of like Sharpie. We gave those A tier, a permanent marker. Actually, this one just says black marker. It doesn't say permanent. So if you didn't know if it was permanent or not, B tier. Paintbrush. Paintbrush is A tier. Paintbrushes are... Mm, Paint is A tier. Paintbrush is B tier. Uh, 
Pencil is B tier. Pen is S tier. bag full of pens is it i'm going to assume this doesn't mean you get all the pens this is talking about a bag i'm assuming the pencil bag gets a d you don't need it this type of desk uh doesn't really work in a classroom that well um see Scissors got A tier, they're useful. Ruler, uh, partially due to straight edge and compass stuff, got A tier. Pencil sharpener gets C tier. Nah, well, you need it for the. Yeah, it's C tier. Uh, blank paper. White paper, S tier. I love plain blank paper. You need a stack of plain blank paper. I have that inside, not here but you need a stack of plain blank paper. Also, you need a stack of lined paper. You need both stacks. This is like the first things I'd recommend for a teacher. If a teacher is like, I'm setting up my classroom, I'd be like, you got chairs and desks? Okay, get some blank paper. And a notebook. Uh, is that what this is? What the heck is this? Leave a comment if you know what these are supposed to be. Is that an electric pencil sharpener or a notebook or what? I guess it might be a notebook. Oh, it, oh yeah, it got cut off the edge. So that's what's happening. The edge got cut off, so it looks weird, but it's supposed to be a bound notebook. S tier. Go up there. No, not A tier. You're S tier. And I don't know what that is. Okay. So someone's um, asking about if I am checking the chat. I check it every once in a while. I can see it. I just wasn't looking at it right then, but I will scroll through it now. I'm going to have to log off the stream before too long. Um... So let's see, someone recommended lava lamps. That's a good thought. I'll put that with a question mark, lava lamps. Um, I also have this plasma thing. I keep it in my room, but I have a little plasma ball. That's cool. I made a short about it, but I'll, I'll bring it back on the stream sometime. Someone asked about the number 36, 36, 24, 36. I don't know what you mean. Like one singular number, like, 362,426 or just those numbers because those are great numbers 36 and 24 those are s tier numbers <laughs> someone says naughty distractions are coming in their mind but they need to focus for an exam what should they do um i would say maybe you should um Make yourself a little schedule of what particular thing you should be studying at different times. And then you're like, okay, it's two o'clock. I'm reading this page. I should try and finish this by three. And then I read that page at three. Having a little schedule might help if you got your test tomorrow. Um, Someone asked if I got a link tree. I'm not sure exactly what that does. There's a bunch of links on my channel. So I don't have like necessarily the link tree thing that might like shrink links or something. I don't know what you mean exactly. But um, in this description, there are my most important links and there are extras maybe on the about section. But like the most important links are uh, the main channel, the Patreon, the Discord, the subreddit, and I guess the TikTok. Um, sometime before long, I might try and hire someone to put all my shorts on other sites, like on Instagram or Facebook or stuff, because uh, those sites do have people watch shorts too. So it, when I have the budget sometime, I'll probably hire someone to 
upload my shorts on one of those side platforms. It just takes me a lot of time already to tag and upload them for like YouTube and TikTok, so I haven't put them anywhere else. Um, but those are the most important links for now. Eventually, the most important link will be a domain name I own that I haven't built anything on yet. Comboclass.org. That will be eventually the most important one. Someone asked my favorite calculator. Uh, I don't really have a favorite. I'm not positive. Uh, graphing calculators are cool, but I the one I had was called a TI-84, but I don't want to say that's my favorite calculator because that thing was so expensive that I still feel ripped off. I still feel like I'm trying to get my $60 out of that TI-84. And so, I don't know. Um, I don't have an opinion really on my favorite calculator, but maybe I should get more calculators and try. Um, and yeah, so uh, Quinn kind of answered the question about dimensions where they're different dimensions. So that's kind of similar to what I meant by infinity can be seen as the next dimension where like lines there, you could put an infinite amount of lines to get an area. You could put an infinite amount of areas to get a volume. So they're kind of one dimension off. <laughs> um, and is it weird that this channel will get a play button before the main channel? It is kind of weird, but I might, here's the thing. So the shorts draw the most attention to the channels. That's why this one blew up. It's not because of the bonus videos or live streams. It's because the shorts. So I might start putting some like of my best newer, sh like when I make new shorts in grade negative two, I might start putting some of the best ones on the main channel because I do want to draw more people there. But for now, I kept it separated because I like to see the main channel as sort of like its own little work of art or as sort of like a season of a TV show. So you can go to the main channel if you want to like get all the free episodes of some season of a TV show. And then you can go to this channel if you want to get all of the extra bonus stuff, which it ended up including a lot of things, including the shorts, uh, which is why this one flew up faster. Uh, this channel also, they made me name an at for a handle, like at what? And at, I named the channel Combo Class Bonus, but then I was like, I don't want to call it at Combo Class Bonus, so I'll call it at Demotro. And that was actually open. So on YouTube, at Demotro now takes you to this channel. And remember, Demotro is only O's, D-O-M-O-T-R-O. -O. Uh, but at Demotro takes you to this channel. I'll put that right here so people can see. And at combo class takes you to the main channel because they make you have a handle now. I might actually rename this channel to Demotro at some point, but I need to make sure a few more people have it locked in their brain that Demotro and combo class are basically the same thing, that combo class is Demotro's show. There may also be a Demotro channel that's me doing other stuff because this channel may have my music and other stuff in the future too. I may scare away a bunch of the subscribers when I start dropping music videos. Who knows? In any case, uh, although it sounds cheesy to like get one of those play buttons and I'm like embarrassed to say that I would be proud to get one because it seems like a cheesy little like plaque, I will be really proud to get that when this channel hits 100,000 because I've watched YouTube my whole life. And I've always thought someday maybe I'll have one of those for my ideas. And if it happens during grade negative one, I'm going to cry from happiness because it's just going to be like what I thought would happen, but sooner than I thought. So we'll see. It's going kind of slow this week. Some weeks the shorts go crazy. YouTube puts them on everyone's page. Some weeks they don't do that as much. So like this is one of those weeks where I'm getting like 100 subscribers a day. Still awesome. But there were weeks where it was flying up. So you never know. Uh, I'm excited to get close to that. But first we got to pass our 90,000 and uh, 90,625, which I think is the right one. Uh, number something along those lines is the smallest, or no, the only five-digit automorphic number. We'll learn about that when we pass it. 
and someone said I should keep the old lab coat and just patch it. What I think I'm gonna do is buy a new lab coat for the grade, but I will of course keep this. And what I'll do is whenever I have a guest, cause I wanna like work with more scientists or people who have weird animals or people with a weird skill. So whenever I have somebody else come to join me in the combo class to present like a friend or whatever, um, then I'm gonna make them wear the old lab coat. So they'll wear this one <laughs> whenever I like, if I, you know, like in my dream uh, world someday, like when, uh, say, Terrence Tao is in here doing a combo class prime number video with me, I'm going to make him wear this lab coat. <laughs> um, and then additionally, if I'm ever around something that looks dangerous, like if I'm ever around a crazier fire or something, I'll wear both. I'll wear two lab coats. So I'll be extra protected. But here's something I do want you guys to think about. So some things I've had one of, and then this next grade I'll have two of. Like there will be a second desk and there will be a second lab coat. But what if these aren't the natural numbers progressing? What if these are the factorials? And in grade three, I have six coats. In grade four, I have 24 coats. You never know could be the factorials. Um, someone wants to know why the set of even numbers must be as big as the natural numbers, even though it's a subset. Uh, really, it's related to the idea that you can pair them up in a one-to-one -one correlation if you were to go and talk about infinity or all of them which you kind of can't. I mean, you can, but at first, if you're looking at any sensible chunk of the number line, a finite chunk, there are more natural numbers than even numbers. But if you're analyzing out of the infinity and saying, I'm trying to categorize different types of infinities, you would call those the same type of infinity because you could say for any N, I'm pairing it up with two N. The n's are the natural numbers, the two n's are the evens, and every n can be made into a two n, so we can pair them up. However, you can prove, and I'm not going into this now, it's this thing called Cantor's diagonalization argument, but that's a story for a whole nother video, but you can prove that you can't do that one-to-one -one lining up with the, all the real numbers to something like the naturals. Lots of cool thoughts and questions. Someone's wondering when my first music video is coming. I have some in the past that I've released to some of my Patreon people and I'll release to more people in the future. I have music videos from the past that are out there, just they're under different names so you wouldn't find them easy. But my first Demotro music video I don't know. I need to figure out where I'm going to record, get a studio set up or something. I used to have a studio set up in this thing and it's a long story sort of, but I might be able to record uh, somewhere around here or at a friend's place or something. I have more than enough um, stuff I want to record the lyrics for and then do. They're kind of like hip hop tracks and a lot of them are edited versions of the beats that are in my soundtracks. So the main step to go is recording the lyrics that I've written. So um, I'm not positive when the music videos will be coming. I got to record some songs first, hopefully soon. Hopefully maybe about the time grade negative two drops. And uh, bye Surya Dev, good luck with your exams. Um, so someone's interested in iterated functions um, and interpolating iterations. Uh, yeah, iterations of things are very interesting. Like when you do something to a number and then do it to that and then do it to that. One of my favorite iterative processes are the aliquot sums, which are the sum of the proper divisors of a number, the sum of the factors apart from themselves. And what you do with those is if you go to a number's aliquot sum, then go to that number's aliquot sum, then go to that number's aliquot sum, which numbers have a loop? 
which numbers dead end on something, which numbers stay on themselves, and that relates to perfect numbers and multi-perfect numbers, and we'll come back in our episode where the multi-perfects will return. Um, so that's a fun example of an iterated function. I like thinking on my own of ways you could run a process on a number that you could keep hitting the next number with that wouldn't be predictable or that would sometimes fluctuate up or downward. Uh, very challenging and interesting. Um, but I'm not sure exactly what you meant in that comment. I'm going to have to go uh, try and answer that more in a future one. I think I'm going to wrap up this stream pretty soon now that we have sorted our things. But I need to do some quick thinking about what else we practically need here in the combo classroom. I'm going to go with we have enough dice, but we need more clocks. And, oh, new whiteboard and lab coat and desk. We need a new desk. And one thing that would be kind of fun is, so you know those uh, when there's like a skeleton that's on display, like a fake skeleton? That'd be kind of cool. Skeleton? What else is cool in like a science lab? Um, if we had a uh, barbecue grill, that could be cool. Barbecue grill. We could just uh, grill stuff whenever we wanted in the classroom as an experiment. Uh, what else you got? Leave a comment if you want me to add anything else on this list that I'll save on my computer to think about when I go through my budget. Um, and to whoever's wondering how I learned math, that's been stories from other stuff. I've learned some stuff from classes, but the majority of it was from reading and personal experiments, was from books and online and my notebooks. Um, an electron microscope. I don't know if we can get an electron one, but let's put microscope of some sort would be cool. Oh, I wrote microscope. A uh, microscope of some sort would be cool. Um, we can kill these things. And, oh, what I need to do is fill wall with equations. I wrote some equations on that green wall. I need to actually fill wall with equations or something else. Fill it with clocks, fill it with vines, something with the wall. Um, and then what else we need to do is another interesting plant for my planter. We're planting some crazy onions and garlic back there. And let's see their status. So this one is an onion going, and this these ones are the garlics. And when this uh, one like was sitting in the soil, it started trying to root down and grow all these roots too. These garlics are ready to do something interesting and onions. And we're gonna try potatoes as well, uh, but there's room in this planter. We can do more than that. So we're gonna figure out another cool plant to put in there too. So once I can get an old one for like 3K, I do not have $3,000 to spend on an electron microscope. I, I have nowhere, I don't have $3,000 to spend on the sum of all this stuff. Um, so maybe in the future, I'll have some crazy budget and be able to buy a billion microscopes. For now, we're gonna have to try and find a used one or something. I find my stuff used or free or various ways. Um, so, I think we're going to wrap up our school supplies stream soon. Thank you for joining me in school in our very strange stream today. Just having fun, goofing around, looking at some supplies and ranking them. I got to log off now because I have some private lessons to teach and some normal human things like cooking some lunch. But later tonight or tomorrow, I will be doing a very unique stream. And it will be me pulling up GarageBand, like I mentioned, which is a programming music software, one of the simpler ones, um, and programming a beat from scratch. And if you guys get me hyped up enough, I might even do a stream sometime soon where I will show you guys my freestyle rapping skills. 
And because my head has a crazy rhyming dictionary in it, it's a weird skill I have practice on. So uh, someday we may do a stream while I, where I freestyle rap about whatever comment you leave. And I'll be able to come up with multi-syllable rhymes, whatever comment you leave. And then someday we'll maybe do a stream where I more explain how it's so mathematical how I make my music. I never realized until recently that a lot of my musical processes are very mathematical. And when we make a beat, I will definitely have opportunities to talk about a lot of math things. Um, someone asked if, am I better at math than Will Hunting? I actually haven't seen that movie. I don't watch that many movies, so I'm not sure. Um, someone asked if any of my songs are published. Some of my songs under older names are. I do have songs all on Spotify, on YouTube, all over under older names that are harder to find. Some of those I only put out for my higher tiers on Patreon, but I will leak them to the rest of you at some point. So stay tuned if you want. Uh, there will be more streams of a lot of crazy more stuff like that I have to show you. The next of which will be making a beat from scratch. So thank you all so much for joining me here today in the combo classroom. I'll save this document after the stream and keep all of these items for consideration. And catch you again quite soon. Um, how long have we been going for on this stream? Um... Let's, we're going to make me big for the rest of it. And um, how long has this been going? Let me see. We have had a nice, long uh, two-hour stream. Perfect. Just hit two hours. Sounds like the right time to cut it off. Um, I love you all so much. So hope you have a marvelous day. And I'll see if maybe it'll be tonight or maybe tomorrow that I will do that interesting music stream. Um, and whoever's asking if I'm better than Will Hunting, I don't know. I don't know Will Hunting's skill level. I don't know. You also can't compare math skills like that. People know different fields of math. It's not a linear thing. But I don't even know his math level, so I don't know. How many pi... Okay, this is... Just since you asked how many pi digits... I'm going to shut my eyes, and I do know a lot. 3.14159265358. Okay, I might get this a little off here. It goes something like 9793654. Okay, I got lost there. It definitely starts 3.14159265358. I used to have 100 digits memorized in middle school. It was a game I played with my friends. And although I haven't tried to keep any memorized since then, that beginning bit sticks in my head. And if I read it, the re the next bit like locks in my head too. There's like 30 digits that are like kind of stuck in my head. And like those first 10 are like just permanently etched like a tattoo. I don't know if I'll ever be able to forget 3.14159265358. Um, so if you want to know a good approximation for pi also, Here's a really good one, surprisingly. Cube root of 31. Did you know that? Cube root of 31 is shockingly close to pi. It is 3.14138. That is really good compared to 3.1415 something. It is less than a 1,000th off. So you ever need to approximate pi? Uh, your first guy can be 22 sevenths. That's a nice simple 3.14. Then you lose it. You want a better one? Cube root of 31. All right, that's your little fun math fact for the day. Um, oh, yeah, and this is a good one someone else put there. 2, 3, 5, 5 over 1, 1, 3. You get a total of two ones, two threes, and two fives in there. Looks kind of easy to remember those odd ones. Someone says I should react to some old Vsauce videos, maybe. Now, I don't want to do any reaction-type content on here. I would consider doing commentary-type reactions on Twitch, because I would be less worried if they took down that channel than if I got a strike here. I really don't want to get a copyright strike on this channel. I really care about this channel. Uh, so I'm less likely to react to any videos on here, but maybe sometime in my, Twitch, in my streaming schedule I'll launch for next month. 
um, which I'll, maybe even this month or next month I'll launch a streaming schedule. One or two of those days might be on Twitch and then I'll feel a little more free watching random stuff to comment on because I won't be worried if they take down my Twitch page. I won't have that many stakes in that basket. And I do love Vsauce. Vsauce is a brilliant channel. His new videos are great too. His new videos are still masterpiece works of art. Vsauce is, I could see an argument for it being the best channel on YouTube. So Vsauce is definitely one of my heroes. Um, if anyone hasn't seen, they should watch all of his new videos. They're still brilliant. And why do small bubbles fall faster? Good question. Um, maybe because they have less of the typical air in their ratio and their ratio contains more of soap to air. Um, and thank you to whoever said I'm the best channel. That's very nice. Um, I am gonna keep making better and better videos to, as we go on, make sure I can confirm that that I will really feel like the greatest and prove it, which may take a couple grades, but to those of you who already feel that's the case, thank you. So, love you all. Now